Hello and welcome. This is your Wish Upon a Star Lunar Horoscope for Wednesday, January 6, 2021. The last quarter moon is a, a waning half moon, so it's going down, waning half moon. And this is during the January 2021 cycle. Happy New Year to everyone. The decreasing half moon occurs while transiting to the 16th mansion of the moon at 9.37 a.m. And that's using universal time coordinated. And also we're using tropical astrology. Now, Luna's activation of lunar mansion number 16 during a waning half moon at 50% light is very potent and very powerful for performing receptive magic spells and rituals. Now, Match of the Moon number 16 is in effect from very early in the morning of January 6th. Uh, again, that's 2021 at, at 3.45 a.m. So it's very early in the morning until uh, also very early in the morning the next day on uh, January 7th. And that's at 1.37 a.m. Now, with the waning half moon occurring in Libra at 9.37 a.m., Lunar Mansion number 16 is activated at the exact time of the last quarter moon in Libra, the sign of Libra, the scales. I'm Pastor Rosemary, and I'm, I'm a, a Rosicrucian seer and biblical astrologer. That's why I'm the astrology angel, because I'm a biblical astrologer. And also, I'm a Christian psychic and Gnostic mystic. And this is a readings by Rosemary Angelic Transmission. The Astrology Angel Magical Invocations and Horoscope Prediction Method, which we teach, should be used with all mindfulness since very powerful forces of manifestation are unleashed. This is intended exclusively for entertainment purposes. Now, Luna will be in the sign of Libra the Scales at at 12 degrees, 51 minutes, and 22 seconds. And that's going to Libra, 25 degrees, 42 minutes, and 51 seconds. So this is, this is the, these are the coordinates, according to Abraham, of, of the, the 16th lunar mansion. Now the stars to wish upon inside the 16th mansion of the moon, uh, it, which is Al-Jubana. Okay, so the 16th mansion is Al Jabana and the stars, just plural, uh, that you should wish upon if you want your, your wishes and your dreams to come true is Zubin, um, it's El Genuti, Zubin El Genuti and Zubin El Akribi, okay, that are the horns of the scorpion, okay, so I know it's Libra, but it has to do with, with uh, when the stars were in certain positions at certain times, but this is specific for for now, but we're still utilizing the same stars because the position of the stars changes. And also, what you need to understand too is that uh, in some of the, uh, like in the Arabic astrology, Leo was bigger, and it and in, and we're going to get into that a little bit later on in some of the other mansions which we're going to tell you about later on. But just understand that where you have the hindquarters of Leo today, for just an example is back for the Arabic uh, astrology, uh, the, more, the more ancient one, that was the main of Leo. So Leo was very big uh, before and in the Arabic uh, astrology system of that time. So just understand this, but what we're telling you now is for this date and you, using universal time coordinate, everything has been sort of brought together for you. Okay, so it, remember it's the horns of the scorpion and uh, again, it's Zubin El Genuti and Zubin El Akribi, okay? Now, and, and the, again, the, the name of the mansion is Al Jubana. And you might find that, that if you're using uh, a work that calls it a manzil, or if you're reading something from Ptolemy, which we do utilize some of Ptolemy's uh, work, but that is when we utilize the stars and the name of the mansion, okay? You'll, you'll notice that there's like a difference of two. Okay, like they might say that it, for them it's Lunar Mansion, you know, number eight, and then um, then in this system it's Lunar Mansion number ten. There's always two different. Just like uh, th that's something that is always done to get you to constantly seek, to make you a seeker, to find the truth, to find which was first. It's put in there on purpose. Just like we have some systems of uh, of measuring that are based on twelve, and some that are based on ten. Why? because it's too different. 
Also, if you take this month, uh, I'm making this video in December, but it's for January. December is is uh, uh, Deca. December means Deca means ten, but the month is twelve. So you see, everything is like that. Everything has to do with putting, putting, making two different versions of something and having there be some, you know, a, a unit of two units, two units that are different from another system. And that's to keep everybody uh, competing and to keep everybody interested and to keep everybody seeking. Because if everything's always the same, you never seek and there's no life. There has to be movement and seeking for life to exist. So that's why you might find that there's different numbers. But notice it's always a difference of two and it's done on purpose. So we're just giving you something that's very um, brought together for, for our culture, for this time, for the sort of global world system that we're in, and for this, this modern time that we're in. Okay, so now for Lunar Mansion number 16 in, in this system, where it'll be the same as probably number 14 in another system, it's Aljubana. And I'm gonna give you some of the other names of it, like Azubene or uh, Ahubene, that you might find other names too. But the stars, Zubin um, El Genuti and Zubin El Akribi, are very important to know where you are, okay? Now keep in mind that the claws of the scorpion to the ancients are the same as the scales of Libra, okay? So we talked about it was different, had the line was bigger and all that. So, the, so understand that the claws of the scorpion to the ancients are the same as the scales of Libra. To modern astronomers, according to uh, Vivian Robson, which we're going to get into uh, his work a little later on here. Now, ask the angel of, of Alpha Libre and Beta Libre, who is named Azaruel, to bring balance between the love of money and compassion for people, lest both are destroyed. For in this mansion, these two stars can be used by nefarious necromancers and people who might want to do something that would be uh, dangerous. So nefarious necromancers to destroy merchandise, harvest, and relationships, especially to harm women's businesses. So understand that. Now also understand that uh, Zubin El Genuti and Zubin El Akribi are other names for Beta Libre and also for Alpha Libre and, and Beta Libre, okay, respectively. Alpha Libre and, and Beta Libre, respectively. Okay, now. Uh, regarding Agrippa, Cornelius Agrippa uh, and his work, uh, Agrippa reveals the two traditional names for this mansion as being Azubene or Ahubene instead of, um, instead of Aljubana, Al okay? So to which he refers to it as the horns of Scorpio. It encumbers expeditions and voyages. It thwarts matrimony and wedding ceremonies obstructs reaping of orchards and farming yields. So it obstructs those kinds of harvests and it impedes commodities and, and products, okay? Now, for good, Azubene or Ahubene succeeds for the release and liberation of detainees. So the prisoners are set free. Creating images of these things during this mansion brings them to pass. The image of a man being seated upright in an armchair or a bench while clasping a scale for weighing, uh, clasping that in his hand, okay, uh, for weighing produce or wares or gold or something like that in his grasp causes the increase of goods and stocks according to Mansion of the Moon number 16, okay, so this is, this is during Mansion of the Moon number 16, that's what the energy of this mansion brings, okay. Now Agrippa discloses that the rendering of the merchandise or clasping an, a, a level or weighing, or weighing machine is made more potent by forming it as an emblem made of silver than scenting the icon with fine, spicy, aromatic flora. According to Kabbalistic lore, Libra is ruled by Venus. Libra birthstone is opal. Now, for rosaries and amulets, for the making of rosaries and amulets using opals for Libra are magically potent for this praxis, for Lunar Mansion number 16. Kabbalistic and alchemical planetary associations, in this instance, for a, a waning half moon in Libra, the scales, whilst transiting through Lunar Mansion number 16, could be utilized with perfumes, 
essential oils, herbs, or flowers, as well as colors. So if you're not into the making the the jewelry or the rosaries or the amulets and using the you know the opal and and the the different metals that we tell you to use like silver or whatnot or or copper these kind of things if you're if you're not interested in that you could use libra and you could get things that are associated with libra for uh for things that we mentioned like the herbs and the essential oils and the perfumes and the colors okay those are very easy to come by now also uh the, we're going to get into the specifics of the planetary aspects of these specific stars that may be very different for for this portion uh, of of the scorpion uh, because remember Libra was part of the scorpion as opposed to other portions of the scorpion so that's still even if you're using flowers or colors or scents or perfumes uh, you know or essential oils and even if you're using those kind of things you, you can still uh, you, you can still find that it's magically helpful for you to know the specific star uh, uh, pl planetary aspects of the, these specific stars, which we are going to get into here in a moment. So, so stay tuned for that because it's very important. Okay. All right. Now, the planetary alchemical metals in this case would indicate copper for Venus. And Venus is practical and workable for this operation regarding the Libra opal birthstone of opal this could be used for amulet uh, talismans as well as rosaries and copper could also be used for the forming of a rosary chain it's important to note here that according to vivian Irwood robson author of the book the fixed stars and constellations in astrology the greek astronomer ptolemy attributes the stars which are located specifically in the center or mid portion of the claws which we mentioned of scorpio again the claws of the scorpion to the ancients are the same as the scales of libra to modern astronomers so understand that okay and and, and as being attributed to the planets of saturn and in some measure a little slightly less measure to mars in regards to the planetary nature of this area of the constellation of Scorpio. So we're talking about the claws of Scorpion, which are the scales of Libra. So Alpha and Beta Libre, or Zubin Algenuti and, and Zubin Elacribi. Okay, so understand, we're talking about these specific stars to wish upon, and if you're gonna use your rosary beads, you can utilize the opal with copper um, for Venus, or we're gonna get into some specifics here because of the specific portion attributed by Ptolemy to a lot to Saturn and, and somewhat to Mars. Now, this is in contrast to the other portions of the claws of the body of the scorpion that where, where Ptolemy assigns differing planetary aspects. Okay, now since Ptolemy attrib attributes the stars located in the center of the claws of the scorpion to be associated with the planets of Saturn and somewhat to Mars. And since Mars is alchemically associated with the metal of iron, which is workable for this operation, this would be a magically realistic choice to utilize when fashioning a rosary chain or a metal support, which could then be, uh, then attach opal beads or sigils respectively. Therefore, uh, you want to just understand this one thing. Because Saturn uh, has its alchemical metal as being lead. Well, lead is toxic, and and if ingested or absorbed, can cause uh, lead poisoning. So Saturn is associated with lead. So you you know unless you're some kind of a special, specially licensed, skilled person who can use this in some kind of a, you know a, a safe environment where you're protected and the other people are protected from the lead. Well, then you can use the magic for that, but. Otherwise, if you're using rosaries and you're not a specially licensed or skillful person and you don't have all the proper things to protect you, then what you want to do is use um, Mars for the specific aspect, for the specific aspect of, of the claws of Scorpion, which are the scales of Libra, which are Alpha Libre and Beta Libre, which are uh, Zubin uh, El Genuti and Zubin El Acribi. So Mars. Again, because Saturn, which is more associated, is lead, and that's difficult to use. So you understand when we're talking about 
a metal. So if you want to use a you know perfume that's not toxic, that's associated with Saturn, yada yada, you can do that kind of thing. Okay, now in summary, the magician could use copper for the alchemical metal. For the general, copper because of Venus, for the general sign of Libra, the scales. Though since the ancients saw Libra and Scorpio blended together as the same constellation, and since the specifics of the center of the claws of the scorpion were in the ancient uh, eras attributed to Saturn and in some quantity to Mars, iron is another workable, according, attributed to Mars, another workable, very specific and very pragmatic and very precise choice that is very exact in its magical energies to the uh, to the energies of the 16th mansion of the moon, uh, the specific mansion that we're talking about, Al Aljubana or um, uh, Aljubana, or as as Agrippa would, you know, Warnock calls it Aljubana, uh, but then again, Agrippa would call it uh, Azubene or Ahubene. Okay, so. So if you wanted to be very exact to this mansion, you would utilize the, the something, you know, non-toxic for, for Saturn, or if you're using a metal, you could use Mars because iron is, is something that is not, we're not ingesting it or absorbing it, and some people um, take iron, you know, therapeutically, while some people could be in a condition where they have too much iron, but generally it's not considered toxin, okay? Not generally speaking. Only in some very specific cases could too much iron possibly bo you know, bother somebody. Some people need to take iron. Some people don't need to take iron. But it's not usually seen as a very toxic metal. And it can be used for a rosary chain uh, more, more easily, okay, because it's not toxic. Now, uh, uh, keep in mind, again, that Saturn is associated with lunar mansion number 16 in a greater amount than is Mars, according to Ptolemy. Nevertheless, Saturn's alchemical metal of lead, remember, it is especially toxic. And unless a person is very specifically trained and licensed for the handling of lead, um, and you have, like I said, all the proper things to protect you, and the people you're using it with, or for, or whatever, it is not realistic nor usable for this practice. So use either a Venus association, if you're using a metal of copper, which is very good, or iron, which is also very good for the specific. Now, also, you can, you can also look at the fact that for this to, to really to excite the angel um, Azaruel, that is specifically for these stars in Lunar Mansion number 16, or for uh, Azubene or Ahubene, or for Al uh, Jubana, okay? Uh, this, uh, what you want to do is use something that would be associated with copper for Venus or, or with iron for Mars, but when you're talking about the what, what Agrippa said that the ancients used, uh, he, he made it specifically to be used in something where you're, you're using the icon and you're using silver. So because the ancients utilized silver instead of lead or Mars for this mansion specifically, you might want to use that because that's a very healthy metal to use. And silver is an alchemical opposite to, well, the moon, which is uh, alchemically associated with silver, is associated with um, alchemically is the opposite of Saturn and lead. It's the opposite, okay? So silver could be used. And this might be some kind of a blind, too, a magical blind to use silver because lead would be something that someone would use if they wanted to cause harm, okay? If they wanted to encumber voyages, encumber expeditions, if they wanted to do evil magic, they wanted to thwart matrimony and, and stop wedding ceremonies and obstruct the reaping of orchards and stop farming yields and stop harvest, they would probably taint things with lead and make this in lead and put it somewhere. You understand what I'm saying. So the silver is a blind. But if you know, and you know specifically you can use Mars, and you can use iron, or you could use copper, then you can use it in a way where you can use, use it for the good part of the mansion, which is, is to, um, to, you know, 
it says for good. Uh, you can also uh, use the talisman to for the liberation of of detainees or captives or the freedom of prisoners, and you you can you can do those kinds of things. You know, you can also use it for good. So understand that 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 image of a man holding a balance, clasping it in his hands, what you make it out of that image is going to be very important and then you can scent it with the fine spicy aromatic flora okay so you can make it in silver you can make it in copper you can make it in iron if you, you know making it in lead would be only if you want to harm yourself and others which we don't recommend you do because when you harm others you do end up harming yourself because we're all one and anything toxic you put into the environment it does eventually come back to you you know like when they used to have smoking areas in a you know, I used to work at, in a hospital, you know, I was a, a charge nurse, I was an RN, when they had, back they used to have smoking, and it was a hospital for women and children, so there was a lot of newborns and mothers, and <laughs> a smoking section, and there would be a sign, like the, I used to think, well, how can the sign read, you know, the smoke doesn't read the sign, the smoke just goes over and and bothers the, the children and the, and the, you know, pregnant mothers and the mothers who just gave birth and all of this, so you understand what I'm saying. Uh, it's best to not do harm to others because and it's best to tell people when harm is being done so they can not be harmed and, and so they can protect themselves. All right. And that is our goal here. That's what our goal is. Now, uh, other Kabbalistic correspondences for Lunar Mansion number 16 are as follows. The moon in Libra uh, provides qualities of synchronization, also tranquility, and also a good deal of hospitality for the moon in Libra. Now, when it comes to romantic relationships or even important friendships, Luna in the sign of the scales bestows attributes of determination and fortitude. Planetary angel for Luna or the moon is a Gabriel. Uh, God is my strength, uh, power of God, and a messenger of God. Zodiac angel for Libra is Zuriel, whose divine tone is we balance. The tarot card for Luna or the moon is the High Priestess, which you see here, the High Priestess. You see here what the pillars of, of Yachim and Boaz, and you have the re receptive uh, crescent of the moon receiving the flowing waters and the triple goddess with the triple uh, moon upon her head with the pomegranates behind her. She's the psychic. She's holding the, the it says here, the Torah, T-O-R-A, and that's like uh, tarot and Torah. And you can, and it goes in, in a circle, and you see how it's a, it's actually the same thing. And she's the high priestess. That's the Hebrew letter Gimel, and that's the path. The Gimel, the cat means camel, is the path to the higher self. Okay. And uh, for Western uh, array, the musical note for the moon is the note of F. So we're going to play that for you now. For F, for the high priestess, for the moon. I realize I shouldn't hold it too close to the microphone. I realize it, it vibrates too much when I hold it too close, so I'll try not to do that. And the tarot card uh, for Libra, the scales, is justice, the justice card for Libra, all about justice. And in this, in this deck, in the Rider Waite tarot deck, uh, it's number 11, where in some decks it might be different if you have different decks, because they assign different numbers in different decks. Again, it's to keep you seeking. Again, that's why they make different decks uh, different, to keep you seeking. Is Pluto a planet or is Pluto not a planet? What's that for? That's to keep you seeking, keep you seeking the truth, to create movement, because without movement there is no life. Okay. Now, uh, the Western Array musical note for the sign of Libra, the scales, is D. I'm going to play that for you now, trying not to hold it too close. That's D for Libra and the card to invoke the energies. Actually, the tarot cards are, as you see from the Lunar Mansions, far more invocative than they are predictive. And remember, all pre uh, predictions are curses or blessings. And as my priest used to tell me, uh, all of us, uh, it, within every curse there's a blessing and within every blessing there is a curse so 
So don't be too upset if you've got a blessing. Well, don't be too upset if you've got a curse or too happy if you've got a blessing. Understand it all works out to what? And Libra understands to balance. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to share with you some of the books uh, that I utilize, plus my own book, which I'm writing. I've been writing it since 1988, and it's, it's uh, Star Magic Grimoire. It's my Star Magic Grimoire. And, but before that, um, I'd like to, I'll tell you, um, I'll go ahead and, and tell you where I got these, uh, some of these information from and uh, the information that I'm talking about in this video and that's found in the attached document is based on the oral tradition known as Kabbalah, which was taught to me by Rosicrucian clergy when I was but a young girl, the facts of which I have committed to memory. Now, much of the information about star magic specifically, was also taught to me through an adjacent German pagan coven, which had established satellite covens throughout the world, and I was in one of them. And I began writing a book at that time uh, based on these extremely important teachings in 1988, which I have entitled to be my Star Magic Grimoire. And this is what I have of it so far. So far, it is it is partially in in, in in type and partially in my own handwriting, which I, you know, have, it's hard to see it here, but you can see when I angle it here, I start, it has the diagrams and everything in handwriting. And a lot of the, the so th this is my, the beginning of my star magic grimoire and my magical diary. It's, it's a, it's not my book of shadows. That's my star magic grimoire. And one of our, um, we had a high priest and high priestess and, uh, Later on, uh, we all took turns being either high priest or high priestess each week. And one of, one of the members, uh, a gentleman who was in the military, who was a member of our coven, a very important member of our coven, said that tradition is momentum. So what's only in the scriptures is not, is not to get rid of tradition. Because like to, to Orthodox Hebrews and Jews, their tradition is extremely important. And to Catholics, our tradition is extremely important. And, and I'm not, not that familiar with other cultures, but I would imagine that other cultures have traditions that are extremely important to them as well. They have their books, but they also have their traditions and their art, because the books go into the left brain and the art goes into the right brain. So, you know, and the left brain is considered to be more logical and more masculine, and the right brain is considered to be more feminine and more creative and more artistic. So understand that. Now the first thing I'd like to share with you is the, the tarot cards. It's my uh, giant, it's called the giant, the giant rider weight tarot deck. And uh, see it's the jumbo one, the, the giant one, which I like to use in these videos because it's nice and big. <laughs> you can see it. And uh, I've also got my mansions of the moon. The, Ma the Mansions of the Moon by Christopher Warnock, a lunar zodiac for astrologic for astrology and magic. A lunar zodiac for astrology and magic, second edition. And it's got ephemeris for for 20, uh, 19 to 2033, and it's illustrated by Nigel Jackson. And this one right here is the one we're talking about. This is uh, Al uh, Jub Jubana or Ahubene or uh, Azubene. And it's Lunar Mansion number 16. Yes, it's the 16th mansion. Okay? And it's got poems in it, and it's got all kind of really good information, all kinds of really good work from Picatrix, and all kinds of references. It, uh, Christopher Warnock makes references to the Picatrix and to many other works, and Ptolemy and many other works. And you can also... also uh, look for Agrippa and uh, Robson's work, okay? And Agrippa has the three books of occult philosophy, uh, and that's uh, Llewellyn's, that's Llewellyn's, Llewellyn's source book series, and it's, it's uh, edited and annotated by Donald Tyson. I have a lot of Donald Tyson's books. I have one of his books about magic, which tells you how to do magic using Mercury as the center of your Kabbalah instead of using the sun. 
it's extremely interesting and it gives you another to show you that you can make anything the center of your magic okay so understand that and uh, this is the foundation book of Western occultism written by Henry Cornelius Agrippa of um, Nettersheim and uh, completely uh, annotated with modern commentary again that's Donald Tyson okay so so those are very important books very important books all right uh, now the page numbers for uh, Mansion of the Moon uh, that book, the one we just showed you, Mansion of the Moon by Christopher Warnock. For this video, we've used uh, pages 85, 87, and 167 for the ephemeris. And you, if you want to look at the pages, you can look at the document attached. And for um, Agrippa, the three books of occult philosophy, we used three, 369, 393, and 533 for the angels. 533 for the angels, and 393 uh, for some of the other information. Now, for the fixed stars and constellations and astrology, uh, by uh, Vivian Warwood, uh, excuse me, Vivian, um, I'm excuse, excuse me, Robson. <laughs> I was thinking of Warner. For by Vivian E. Robson, the fixed stars and constellations in astrology. It has a lot of stuff about Ptolemy. Uh, that's from 1923. Okay, and that's pu published by uh, American Federation of Astrologers. Uh, that's pages 49 and 50. So, thank you very much and. Join us again next week. We're going to try to get these ahead a little bit, get, get ahead a little, get him up for the month. But we're going to have one every week for the half moons and the new, and the full moons. And when they have, uh, when there, when when there are uh, solstices and equinoxes of the sun, we will show that. And also we'll do a video on that. And also we're going to be doing when there's um, also uh, eclipses. That's eclipses for the sun or the moon. All right. Thank you. See you soon.